Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here. Welcome back to Gen Sense. You remember how uh, a little while ago I did a video about the top 20 best-selling men's fragrances in the US and Prada Luna Rosa Ocean. That was the uh, big daddy for Prada at the moment, for men anyway. Well, we got a new fragrance from Prada today to talk about. Just came in yesterday and I've been giving it some wear. So this is basically just a glorified first impression. It's Prada Lunarosa Ocean Eau de Parfum. Yeah, we've got a, a new Prada. Yes, and it's flanker of a flanker. Yes, it does make sense though, because if Lunarosa Ocean is doing really well for Prada, then they want to capitalize on that, right? And, and kind of keep that momentum going. And so it makes sense to put out the Eau de Parfum version of Lunarosa Ocean and see if they can't, you know, push it just a little bit further. So in today's video, I will show you guys the presentation up close and personal. I'll break down the fragrance a little bit, let you know how it smells, and I'll let you know if I think it's worth checking out. So let's jump into it. As always guys, I will have Lunarosa Ocean Eau de Parfum linked in the description along with the original Lunarosa Ocean and uh, a couple other Lunarosa fragrances that I think are worth checking out, the best of the bunch that you can currently still find. And uh, a touch of shameless self-promotion, Terra Nova, the fragrance that I creatively directed, along with Blue Ridge and Jet Black Enigma, underneath Michael Malol, Michael Malol X Gen Sense. Uh, but anyway, Terra Nova, up for fragrance of the year uh, for men's fragrance releases, prestige fragrance releases. 2022. So again, I want to shout out everybody for supporting me with that one. And uh, that one you can find in every Perfumania and fragrance outlet in the country in the United States. So you can go into those stores and check it out there, or you can order it off the internet using the code GENTSENSE. It is linked in the description. That will get you 20% off. That goes for the whole website, including my other fragrances. Okay, let's jump into Luna Rosa Ocean. Let's take a look at the presentation. So here we have the box. You have the name of the house, name of the fragrance size and concentration like every fragrance ever made. I have said that exact same thing probably a thousand times. But yeah, there it is, all right there on the front. Uh, you have this nice little stripe, the Prada stripe that goes up to the top of the box. On one side, you have Prada.com. On the other, a QR code. On the back, you have your ingredient information and your barcode. And on the bottom, you have your batch code. Mine is 22WD3CG. Kind of looks like C6, but it is CG. And here we have the bottle. It looks uh, pretty much the exact same as the original Lunarosa Ocean bottle, other than two things. The first thing, it says Eau de Parfum. The second thing, it is darker up top here. Uh, when you look at them like this, maybe you can't tell on camera, I'm not exactly sure, but the Eau de Toilette version, a little bit lighter than the Eau de Parfum. Atomizer, of course, built into the top of the bottle. On the bottom, you have a sticker with your badge code. And when you get this new, it does come with a little covering, like that little plastic cover that sits over top the top of the atomizer. That way it doesn't spray in transit. <laughs> it does say remove before use. I would love to see the person who is like trying to spray it with this plastic cap on and they're like, dude, it just, it just keeps spraying the plastic. How am I supposed to wear it? It's making a mess. Let's share a couple sprays. Handy dandy tester strip, atomizer. Let's do it. It's really good. There's one thing you have to be, I guess, slightly careful with, with these Luna Rosa bottles. The atomizers are pretty strong as you saw just then. So if you hold it fairly close to your skin, you are going to douse wherever you spray. You'll legitimately have like fragrance dripping off of where you sprayed, but that's not a bad thing. I mean, I would rather have a good atomizer than a complete trash one. In keeping with uh, tradition, the Eau de Parfum is gonna be a little bit more expensive. This is $130 retail for a 100 milliliter size bottle. The Eau de Toilette by comparison is $115 at full retail for a 100 ml size bottle. And another thing with Lunarosa Ocean Eau de Parfum is they have adopted, at least up till now, uh, the trendy three note note breakdown. One for the top, one for the mid, one for the base. Keeping things very simplistic makes things easier for marketing. I actually saw somebody say that 
Uh, the reason that they do that is to make sure the fragrance can't be cloned, which that is not how that works. <laughs> Just to really quickly touch on that, uh, clone brands, clone houses, they don't clone a fragrance based off the note breakdown. Like you can't even really do that. I mean, think about that for a second. Like you look in a note breakdown, it's got nine notes on there. Are you gonna go, oh, well, these nine notes, I know exactly how to make that now. Like, no, that doesn't work, man. Getting sidetracked, we'll do this very quickly. Typically the way that a, a clone brand would clone a fragrance is they would uh, run the fragrance through a, a gas chromatography machine that's going to spit out uh, a close, close uh, chemical breakdown of what is within that fragrance. And then you can take that and use that as a blueprint to help you make a clone version. Uh, but actually most of these major clone houses like Armoff and stuff, they employ professional perfumers who can take that information and, and make something very similar with a twist sometimes, but yeah. So just so everybody's on the same page there, this is just strictly marketing. And the note breakdown that they give us for this is grapefruit essence in the top, incense in the mid, and then vanilla bean in the base. So one thing that you will notice missing in that note breakdown is iris. There was iris in the original Lunarosa Ocean, which is something that I feel like, and a lot of you out there have mentioned as well, helped set this apart a little bit from some of the other uh, big blue fragrances out there from the major designer houses. So how does it come across? How does Lunarosa Ocean Eau de Parfum smell? Well, when you first spray it on, you do get that citrus, that grapefruit essence, as they call it. It's fresh. It's uh, a little bit sweet. It does have a resemblance to the Eau de Toilette in the opening a little bit. So yeah, you can tell this is Lunarosa Ocean Eau de Parfum. It, it makes sense. You know, it's not one of those uh, Eau de Parfum versions of a fragrance that doesn't smell like the other uh, original version. It's it's definitely a Lunarosa Ocean, for better or for worse. So you get that citrus in the opening, as I said, very fresh, uh, a nice kind of pop to it, and that dissipates pretty quickly. I gotta say, it goes away, you know, within five minutes. This is one of those openings that is very short-lived, at least off my skin. And then you do actually get kind of an iris that comes in there. I know it's not an official note here, but you do. It's a little bit of that, you know, creamy sort of iris, not not full on makeup-y, I would say, but absolutely, I get flecks of iris here. It's not like, you know, in your face, super aggressive or anything, but it's there. The incense is your more typical blue fragrance incense, if we can call it that. Uh, so that means it's going to be kind of in line with, you know, the incense that you would find across all blue fragrances in the designer realm. If you know, you know. It's not like a heavy smoke or anything like that. It's just this faint little waft of incense that gives it some nice depth. I really love the opening, even though it doesn't last that long. I like the mid a whole lot too. As it starts to work through the mid into the dry down, which also doesn't take too terribly long, the vanilla comes out and the vanilla becomes more and more prominent. Again, like I said before, kind of flecked with like the remnants, the remembrance of Iris. And I'm wondering if that's like something very popular <laughs> right now as well. Uh, for a while there, for like a year or two, seemed like Iris was in a lot of different men's fragrances, men's designer fragrances. They were putting Iris in a bunch of things. Like it was very popular, almost like, um, when we went through that whole oud section of fragrances years ago where everybody had to have an oud fragrance. And eventually that kind of, you know, dissipated and, and people got it out of their system and they moved on. But Iris for the past couple years, I feel, has been uh, all over the place. But now this year we've seen two fragrances come out, Gentleman Society and now Lunarosa Ocean Eau de Parfum that both had iris and their predecessors that don't have iris in the official note breakdown but when you smell them you can pick up a little iris in there um, maybe not as much as the predecessors but you can still pick up 
a little bit. And so I think realistically, if they wanted to, with both of those synths, they could have put Iris in there as a note, an Iris Accord, or as however you want to put it, they could have put it in there, uh, but they decided not to. So anyway, the vanilla comes out and the vanilla kind of is the star of the show here. You could also say that this one has a little bit of an amber woodiness that, you know, sits underneath everything, kind of provides like the bass that all the other notes play off of. And this one at the end of the day does end up being a super pleasant smelling, um, warm blue fragrance, something of that sort. Initially very fresh. And then as that dries down, which again happens pretty quickly from the opening, you get that sweetness, that warmth, sort of a creaminess to it as well. And I actually like it a lot. <laughs> I think it smells awesome. And just within the same time frames, uh, Luna Rosa Ocean Eau de Parfum has grown on me quicker than the original did, which the original I liked initially, thought it was good, uh, but didn't grow to really like it until a little ways later as I started to wear it more. This one pretty much right away as soon as I sprayed it on, I dug. It even has like this sort of almost airiness to it as it transitions from the opening into the mid that I thought was very interesting as well. Like if you keep on smelling it over and over again, during that transition period, it's almost like clean skin and airiness that I really dig. Now, since this is a first impression, I can't really give you too much as far as uh, performance goes. I wore it yesterday in the evening when it came in. I sprayed it on this morning. Seems to last a long time, projects well. I can easily pick it up as I'm going throughout my day. I don't know that I would call this uh, really a straight up summer scent. I know Lunarosa Ocean, with a name like that, you're thinking, you know, fresh out of the shower or by the beach or something like that, you know, like a very summer daytime scent. But the Eau de Parfum is a little bit uh, heavier than the Eau de Toilette. It has more, as I said before, warmth and kind of a creaminess to it, especially as the vanilla comes out. And so it's not something that I would think of as like a daytime summer fragrance. I think during the evening, it would work really well. And I think during spring and fall, you could pull it off during day uh, or night. Be a good date night fragrance in general. I mean, it's a Prada and it's a Lunarosa Ocean. So uh, it's not really the type of scent that you have to worry about. Everybody's gonna like it for the most part. So you got a lot of versatility here, a lot of usability potentially with the scent. And I like this one a lot. Uh, Prada Lunarosa Ocean Eau de Parfum. I dig it. Interestingly, this is the second Eau de Parfum version of a fragrance that I've tried in the last few days. The Zara Wanted Eau de Parfum I tried a little bit ago. Didn't like that one as much. Between the two, I would absolutely take the Prada over the Azaro. And uh, there's more coming. Spy Spa Infrared Eau de Parfum. <laughs> uh, so I guess that'll be the next one, assuming I can pick that up sometime soon. Yeah, Eau de Parfum flankers just suddenly showing up. So there we go. Prada Lunarosa Ocean Eau de Parfum. Really dig it. I like it a lot. Uh, the Iris is still there, though it is just uh, toned down, toned down a bit, and obviously not the focus of the fragrance here. Of the three notes that they list, vanilla is the focus, and then incense below that, and then the grapefruit for like four minutes, <laughs> four or five minutes. But yeah, mainly vanilla of the listed notes. Thank you guys for hanging with me. If you have smelled this one, let me know what you think about it. Stay safe out there, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See y'all later.